Coming up on Mountain News this morning, we'll take a look at how blocked railroad crossings across Kentucky have been a problem for years. And the Roussaw Volunteer Fire Department gifted a Christmas miracle to a flood survivor struggling to find a permanent home. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfi. The time is 532 on December 27th. Now let's check in with meteorologist Shane Smith for a look at your forecast this morning. And Shane, it is a soggy forecast out there right now. No, it was raining when I headed in. And it was raining for me too as I was heading in, Olivia. Definitely a soggy morning across eastern Kentucky. Thanks to a cold front moving into the region which is going to bring us some cooler temperatures for the rest of the week. Let's take a look at what's going on on the satellite radar this morning. You can see light showers off and on throughout the entire region. Pinpoint Doppler showing the heaviest of that just to our northeast right now, uh, up between Ashland and Charleston, West Virginia, here in the mountains of eastern Kentucky. It's this light scattered rain. Um, pretty much off and on throughout the entire region. 43 outside the WYMT studio right now. You can see a little bit of that rain there under some of the lights. Jenkins, US 119 looking pretty soggy and the road still looking wet over at Mount Vernon along I-75. Temperatures generally into the 40s, 45 right now. London and Williamsburg, Jackson, 43 Hazard, 46 in Manchester and Prestonsburg. And that rain causing a little bit of fog this morning, especially down in the panhandle of Virginia. Wise, you're down to one mile visibility, and we've got reduced visibility at Pikeville, Prestonsburg, Jackson, Moorhead, and Williamsburg, and Harlan. So just know a couple of spots of dense fog out there in addition to the rain. Temperatures topping out low 50s today, and it's the last time we may see the 50s at least for a couple of days as some cooler weather is moving in. We'll talk about that here in a few minutes, Olivia. Shane, thank you. Crews were cleaning up vandalism left at a Lexington Memorial honoring veterans. Lexington police say vandals spray painted pro-Palestine and anti-war messages along the sidewalks near the Gold Star Memorial and on the military tank at Veterans Park. As Samantha Valentino shows us, local veterans work to help cover up the vandalism. Looks like they uh, painted a lot a lot of different places on the concrete, so we're just going to take that out. Lexington police say they were called to Veterans Park around 4.30 Monday afternoon for reports of graffiti. Someone or a group of people spray painted pro-Palestine and anti-war statements around and on parts of the memorial. The city of Lexington hired mobile soda blasting to clean up the vandalism. They say the city will paint over the vandalism on this tank so they were asked to leave it as is. Members of VFW Post 680 heard what happened and took action. Our best solution was, let's go get some flags. Let's go get some flags that truly represent what the tank is, what this park is, and use those as a method to write the individual or individual's poor idea of protest by just covering it up with the greatest symbol of our country. Nicole Horseman is the junior vice commander for the Department of Kentucky Veterans of Foreign Wars. She says as service members and veterans, their job is to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And one of the most fundamental things that we provide in that defense is freedom of speech. Freedom of speech does not condone criminal activity or desecrating and disparaging the memory of everyone that fought and died to give the citizens of this country the right to their opinions. In Lexington, Samantha Valentino, WKYT. Two people are facing charges after a burglary. It happened in the early morning hours on Christmas Day. Knox County Sheriff's deputies received a call about the burglary at a home on Dogwood Trace in Corbin. After the homeowner followed the man and woman into Laurel County, a traffic stop was executed. The st items stolen were recovered during the traffic stop. 43-year-old Joe Scalf and 26-year-old Felicia Smith, both of London, were taken to the Laurel County Correctional Center. 
A Monticello man is behind bars after multiple instances were where he reportedly was falsely imprisoning a woman and another man. The most recent scenario happened yesterday morning when 37 year old Jason Piercy locked a man inside his home and would not let him go outside. Deputies with the Wayne County Sheriff's Office were eventually able to get into the home after a standoff. Piercy was charged with terroristic threatening and unlawful imprisonment. It's a problem we have covered for years, blocked railroad crossings across Kentucky. Our national investigative team has recently showed you the danger, the promises, and the progress. So are things getting any better locally? Garrett Weimer investigates. Uh, we last looked at these numbers in June, but we found when we looked for an update here, the number of blocked crossing complaints in Kentucky nearly doubled from the first half of the year to the second half. The Federal Railroad Administration received 99 complaints in the first six months of 2023. Since then, there have been 190 reports. The vast majority came from Jefferson County, the second most from Pulaski County. You have to sit and wait and wait and wait. WKYT has been following this issue since 2017, particularly with issues in Pulaski and Scott counties. Kentuckians have filed more than a thousand reports of blocked crossings since the Federal Railroad Administration began tracking them in December 2019. The first full year, just 49 were reported. In 2021, that jumped to 272, nearly 400 in 2022, and roughly 300 so far over this past year. It's kind of like they rule the world. Now, Kentucky has a stopped train law that specifically bans blocking public grade crossings for longer than five minutes. But that law itself has been blocked since 2020 when a judge ruled that the Federal Railway Safety Act preempts state law. Kentucky is one of 19 states that's asked the U.S. Supreme Court to weigh in on the constitutionality of state anti-blocking laws. In a filing just last month, the U.S. Solicitor General, who represents the federal government in front of the high court, urged the Supreme Court not to accept the case. A flood survivor spent more than a year living through different indoor and outdoor conditions, doing whatever he could to make things work after losing his home in the July 2022 flood. Then the Rousseau Volunteer Fire Department was able to provide him with a Christmas miracle. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox tells us how the survivor went from a tent to a roof over his head. More than a year has passed since the July 2022 flood. Jonathan Baker remembered seeing destruction from that day. When the flood first happened and uh, I drove around a little bit and let's see, a lot more people had lost a lot more than what I did. So I, I kind of laid back and just made it on my own. He then spent many nights in several different conditions. Got a tent, I lived in it for a while, then purchased a van. He would bundle up and find creative ways to get warm. I actually used uh, uh, that to hand sanitizer for heat. You can light it, then it makes a flame. Then a Christmas wish came true courtesy of the Rousseau Volunteer Fire Department. When this camper had, had come available, we, we knew that his living conditions, we'd been to his building that got repossessed and all that. Yeah. And so we, we automatically remembered, hey, he's in need. And Baker will now have water and electric, among many other things that have been hard to come by. It actually feels pretty nice to have a bed. You know, it's something I can wake up, not in the weather, be warm, you know. It feels pretty good. <laughs> now in a trailer with his girlfriend and his dog, Baker says it is a step in the process of recovering. I'm looking for a place to buy, you know, a home, my own home and stuff. The flood survivors thank those with the fire department for their help. In Breathitt County, Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Jonathan Baker says he also lost his mom after the flood, making life even tougher. One of his friends in Breathitt County is allowing him to park the trailer on his property. A reminder, time is running out to get your tags renewed before Kentucky's system shuts down. It's getting a major upgrade. Registration won't be available at county clerk's offices after close of business Thursday. Services are expected to resume in mid-January. 
After you take down your Christmas decorations, Kentucky Fish and Wildlife wants you to donate your real trees. It's part of their Christmas for the Fishes recycling program. You can now bring your tree to one of the 29 drop off locations across the state. The donated trees will be used to restore fish habitats in Kentucky's lakes. And while we did not see a white Christmas, Kentucky State Police want you to stay prepared for when we do get some winter weather. KSP released a list of things you should keep in your car. It includes things like a phone charger, blankets, a first aid kit, jumper cables, and some snacks, as well as water. They also ask you not to call 911 for road and weather conditions because it can tie up emergency lines. Coming up, Swifties banded together to provide a magical birthday for a girl in a struggling family. A little bit of rain across the area this morning, but some wintry weather heads our way later in the week. Details in the forecast after.